afternoon. My name is Maritza and welcome back to one of the um, Latino culture video series. Um, so for the past two lessons, I have focused on traditional Latino and Latina artists, um, which, and what I mean by traditional is, um, you know, fine arts like painting and mural painting and sketching and illustrating. But I also want to focus on non-traditional artists like poets and authors and dancers and singers because that's also um, a kind of art but not in the way that we immediately think when we hear artist. So I wanted to focus on a Latina author that I really love myself. Her name is Isabella Allende. Um, she is Chilean, but she was born in Peru, and she has written over 23 best-selling books um, that were translated in 42 languages. So she is a widely known author across many countries, not just in Latin America, and um, she is very famous for her, her books, um, uh, her magical realism books. And I'll explain what that is in just a second. Um, but I wanted to give you a little bit more backstory on her. As I said, she has authored more than 23 best-selling books, um, including Of Love and Shadows, Island Beneath the Sea, um, The House of the Spirits, which was her first book which started as a letter to her dying grandfather, um, City of the Beast, which is a personal favorite of mine, and Paula. Um, Paula was her daughter's name who died at 29. And um, Isabella Allende has started a charitable foundation in her honor, so she is also a philanthropist um, as well as an author. So um, many of her books are magical realist and magical realism is a style of fiction that incorporates a very realistic setting realistic plot with magical elements and um magical the magical elements are included in the story without much explanation because the magical realist authors are trying to normalize the magic in their stories so for example in city of the beasts which is one of her stories um, a boy is sent to live with his grandmother who does research in the Amazon and um, they go to the Amazon together and he discovers the beast of the Amazon which is the magical element of the story but otherwise it is a completely realistic story it's set in the 2000s um, you know he, he flies to New York in an airplane he uses the subway they um, travel and otherwise it's a very realistic story except for the magical elements um, so there are um, her stories are mostly mostly um, the style of magical realism and there are many other Latino and Latina authors who use this um, magical realism is associated mostly with Latino and Latina culture because Latino authors um, really made magical realism what it is today. So I wanted to um, do an art project and a writing project um, in honor of Isabella Allende today. So I wanted to show you some examples of magical realism, not only in the literature or books, but also in art. So again, um, magical realism in art takes um, the realistic and blends it with the magical without much explanation, um, again, to sort of normalize magic in our everyday lives. So I wanted to show you some examples of some art that I printed out to kind of give you uh, some examples of how magical realism can be depicted in art. So. As you can see here, um, this looks like a beach, um, and these people 
are two people scuba diving in the water, but it looks like they're flying and it sort of incorporates these um, two normal realistic settings, like two people swimming in the ocean, which isn't you know, a crazy thing to see, and the beach, which isn't a crazy thing either, but it combines the two in a sort of magical, fantastical way. Um, and again, here, you can see over here that here are kids in their bed, jumping on the bed in their pajamas. Um, and here is the, um, the blanket that kind of looks like a field. And then it turns into these fields uh, from, a, from a, a view from a plane if you look down on um, fields of, you know, farms. It looks like this. And so, again, it takes something very normal, like children jumping on the bed before, before it's time to go to sleep. And it turns into this, you know, magical scene of, of this girl flying over um, some fields. So... Here is another example um, down here. It looks like, you know, these children are walking down a street, but then the streets turn into these houses and it, um, it looks like, again, you're seeing the houses from, um, as if you were in a plane or higher up on a mountain looking down. And lastly, I wanted to show you this piece because um, this is by Frida Kahlo. Um, Frida Kahlo is another very famous Latina artist who um, often incorporated magical realism into her art. So as you can see here, um, through, this is Frida Kahlo. She did a lot of self-portraits. This is her head and she is attached to the body of a deer who has been hunted in the woods. So again, in all of these pieces of art, there are realistic elements. Um, children in bed, jumping on the bed. People swimming in the ocean. Uh, deer being hunted in the woods. Um, children walking along a street with a nice view of the water. But they blend the elements in a sort of magical way. So the project for today is to create your own piece of artwork using magical realism. And I have a couple of tips to get you started on choosing what your magical realist art artistic work is going to be. And I wanted to show you an example of what I did. So this is what my magical realism piece looks like. I decided to incorporate just a street um, with buildings as you can see, which is, again, normal, realistic setting. There's nothing wacky about these buildings or where they are. And um, another realistic element, um, two people pouring each other tea. So milk, tea, whatever, you're pouring into a teacup. And again, both of these things are normal, people pouring tea and this street scene, both normal. But when you blend them together, like these giant hands poking out of windows, it um, makes the piece of art more magical as um, uh, lots of magical realism um, artists like to do. So after showing you my example, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to create your own piece um, of art inspired by magical realism. So I suggest that first you pick a realistic setting. It could be your house, it could be a country you visited, it could be your school, anything. It could be as normal as just a random street that you, that you pick, like I did. And then you can pick another setting or a um, realistic action or an everyday thing, like swimming in the examples that I showed you or walking along the street or pouring a cup of tea. And what you're going to do is then figure out how to incorporate those two things into the same drawing or painting, however you want to do it, um, to add that magical sense. Um, if you get stuck, you can look on Google Images for inspiration. If you just look up magical realism artwork, uh, lots will pop up that gave me some inspiration for mine and um, after you draw your um, piece of art 
I want you to then write a story about the artwork that you drew. Again, trying to include the elements of magical realism, which are a realistic setting and some magical elements that aren't really explained in the story in order to normalize magic in an otherwise realistic setting. Um, so you want the magic to be included in the story and not viewed as weird by the characters. You know, so for example, Harry Potter is not considered magical realism because that is um, an unrealistic setting, Hogwarts, and all the magical, um, all the magical, the wizard places and cities that they have, those aren't realistic settings. Um, but, for example, in Isabella Allende's book, The City of the Beasts, they um, are in New York and in the Amazon rainforest, which are both real realistic settings in today's world. So that's what you want to do. And um, the idea is you write a story behind the piece of art that you do. So um, if I was going to write a story about this piece that um, I wrote, I would probably choose to write from the perspective of maybe someone walking along the street and seeing this happening, maybe pouring tea or passing the sugar or making someone a sandwich, these giant hands making the sandwich and, you know, passing them to the other giant hand. Um, and however you want to do it is great. You can also, if you get stuck on the actual artwork first, you can start with a story that you want to write. Um, so start brainstorming for a story idea and then draw a scene in your story if that makes it easier. Um, because I found it pretty difficult to come up with a way to um, blend to normal actions into something magical. Um, so that is the project for today. Um, again, in honor of Isabella Allende and magical realism, which is a very popular style of fiction in Latin America. Um, you're going to make a piece of art and write a short story um, including the elements of magical realism. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy the project and share your work with us. You can use hashtag love art sphere inc. Um, written instructions and examples of my work will be posted on art sphere's blog under multi multicultural resources and um, this series happens every Saturday at 1 30 so if you would like to tune in that would be great thank you all for watching and have a good rest of your weekend